What's going on everybody? It's your boy Slicey so Blends back with another video, man. Today I got a high bald fade for y'all, bro. The whole shebang from the fade to the beard work, line work to the enhancements, the whole nine yards, man. It's a full detail video. It's 34 minutes long, but trust me, it got a lot of gems in it, man. You don't want to miss out. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button, man. At 100 subscribers, guys, we're going to be doing a giveaway. I don't know if it's going to be clippers, maybe some illusion capes. Maybe freaking a barber kit. I don't even know yet, guys. But at 100 subscribers, we are going to be doing a giveaway. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can be entered into that, man. Without further ado, let's get into the video. Yo, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Swicey Blends. So we got my boy Johnny in the chair right now. We actually had his crib. But today, we're going to be giving him a mid-high... Fade, no hooks with a five on top. As I can see right now, I'm cutting the five on top. Now, y'all want to make sure, guys, with straight hair, super straight hair, which is exactly what he got. Y'all want to make sure you do it. You're going to have to do a couple passes over because if you don't, you're going to end up with a lot of uneven hairs and they're going to stick up at the end of the haircut. And then you're going to have to go back at the end, cut them down. But then once you always want to debulk at the beginning of the fade because if you don't it's going to show when you go back and try to do it at the end of the fade so that's a little tip i got for y'all guys now we're going to come in all right guys now i'm going to come in with my low pros the iridescence we're going to punch in the guy line and one thing i can tell y'all bro is that i've seen and learned throughout my couple years of barbering is not to set your bald guideline in with a sharp trimmer. A lot of barbers struggle to take out the bottom line and they'll go in and they'll set in that bald line with a very sharp trimmer. So at the end, it's hard to take that, to take that last line out. Now after that, then we come in with our sharp trimmer and go and debulk all the hair underneath and if y'all want to know what trim i'm using right now i'm using the black fx ones with the fx1 battery system and i do have a different blade on it though i put a gold fx 2.0 blade on it i just like how sharp the gold fx's are for the blade at least so that's the reason i chose to put this blade on it All right, now guys, we're gonna come in with the shaver. I got the black FX3 shaver. And we're gonna come in and just shave out all the bottoms so we can have a nice smooth transition and our fade, have a nice smooth bottom. Now, one thing I will say, another, another little tip I can give you guys is whenever you are using the shaver, you wanna make sure you don't go all the way up with the shaver into the very top. That's how you create a very hard guideline or very harsh guideline, I should say and struggle to take it out. What I like to do is I like to use the weight of the trimmer to push down. I really don't dig into the skin because that's how people get irritation, how they get, you see people with red marks or bumps or, or um, cuts on their neck. That's how they get it is by barbers digging in too deep and too hard. So what I do is I let the weight of the shaver just go and be smooth on the skin. And also at the very top, Instead of going all the way up, I stop about maybe half an inch or maybe like a quarter of an inch if that, I don't really know if you can be able to determine that with your eye. But I stop about maybe like a quarter of an inch at the way at the top, release the pressure and just kind of flick out. And sometimes if I want to get even a little bit closer, I'll turn it around to where it'll be on that top shape or top foil side and I'll go ahead and push down. That way it's not setting in and not shaving into the top. And then just behind the ear, Behind the ear, guys, I would really recommend coming in with a single foil shaver, such as this Uno I got right here. They really do help, guys. This trimmer is amazing. It has done wonders for me. I, rec I highly recommend you go get one of these, guys. These are great for your low tapers, mid tapers, to come clean up behind the ear, hit it on the mustache, or hit it down here beneath the beard or on the neck because they're really very gentle. Um, so I'd highly recommend these. 
to anybody that's looking to get a single foil shaver. All right, guys, now we're gonna come in with this kind of technique I learned from Sean Cut's hair. Basically, he uses the fusion blade, the um, taper blade, and he goes in and sets in his bald line. So that's what I'm gonna go do right now. I've kind of learned that from him. And it really has helped me, guys, like setting in my bald line, um, my bald guideline with this blade, and then coming back in with my fade blade on my Instinct X's has really helped me one easier to take this line out and two it just made my face a lot cleaner bottom line i am going to come in with the number three closed and just really debulk all this bulk you see right here above this first guideline. And right now I am using my Instinct X's from Stylecraft. I think these are some of the best clippers out so far of, of last year and so far of this year, 2024. Um, if I had to choose between these and like the Babyliss FX1s or, you know, some walls. These are definitely gonna be the ones that I choose. I do kind of still like the original just a little bit more just because they're a little bit more small and they're not as long, but these, in my opinion, fit in my hand a lot better. But with the originals, I'm able to move faster throughout a haircut. So now guys, we're gonna come in and we're gonna attack this first bald guideline we set in. Now I learned this little, I guess it's not really a system, but I use Nate um, from 245, shout out to him. Uh, I use his, his little steps when it comes to this first guideline. He goes, it, he breaks it up into a three section little guide. It's open, which is what we already did, halfway and then close. He doesn't really work in between. Sometimes I, I'll go to that second notch, but really it's about open, halfway, which is what we're gonna hit it right now. Again, this is a fade blade on my Instinct X's. It's the blade that it comes with. I thought about putting a taper blade on it, but I just went ahead and kept the fade blade. And then he goes close. And as y'all can see, that's taking that first guideline out nice and smooth. Now that that first guy line is done, next we're gonna come in with our one guard open. Again, we're gonna stick with this half an inch guy lines that we've been setting. So we're gonna get our one open, go up about half an inch. And when making your guidelines, guys, you really don't want to dig into the hair. You more so want to flick out or scoop out. So that way it makes it, makes it a lot easier, a lot, a lot easier to take that guideline out. Now, same thing with the already having the one on, we're going to do that same little three tier um, step. We're gonna go halfway. And this isn't gonna take it out, guys. This is more so just, this is more so just soften the line up. So when we come in with that half guard, that half guard will come out nice and smooth. And that's one thing I would definitely say, guys, to start doing if you're not already doing it, is whatever you set that guideline in with, go back in and close it up and really soften up that line. It makes things a lot easier when you go in to take it out. Now we got our half guard. We're gonna come in halfway and start attacking this guideline. Remember, focusing on scooping out. You could use more so the corners as well. Um, I kind of use, when I'm cutting, I'm not really on the skin flat. I'm more so at an angle. And I'm scooping out. I've kind of learned. I learned this from. Honestly, do not remember the name of the barber that I learned this from. But 
he was also saying when you're using the corners, you want to fade going with the blade. So if I'm fading this way, if I'm fading like this, you want to use the left corner fading to the right. So that way, when you're cutting, when you're cutting right here, the blade is also catching the rest of the hair and cutting it the same length and giving it a, not, a lot smoother blend rather than going opposite the same way as the corner you're using. You're just cutting into the and making it kind of more choppy if you want to say, which is a good tip because I've started doing it and it really has helped me guys. If you need to as well, you can also close the lever up. So that way you can work more down into where we get into the first guy line and really clean it up. And guys, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell also to stay notified when I drop videos. I know last year was more so up and down with me dropping videos, but this year is definitely a goal of mine and something that I am going to do um, for y'all as well is posting videos, dropping them at least once a week, guys. So like I said, hit that bell to stay up to date with any content that gets dropped for me. Now this is the more easier part of the, of the fade for me. We're gonna come in with the same guard we used to debulk earlier. We're gonna come in with our three guard open and we're gonna go up about an inch and we're gonna start fading down and finishing our fade and getting it nice and blurry. So again, guys, you wanna scoop out. You don't wanna dig in. If you dig in, you're gonna set another hard line up here and then you're gonna to struggle to take that out when you get done. You're gonna really notice at the end of the fade as well. So now we're gonna go ahead and close up the lever. We're gonna go right under that, about in this section. And we're just gonna do the same thing, guys. It's fading down from here, stacking guards. And you always wanna cut against the grain, guys. That's something I've learned as well. If you look at his hair, it goes straight down back here, but as you go forward to more of where the hairline's at, it starts to get more at an angle. So you wanna focus on growth pattern, guys. That's another big key I can give y'all, is when cutting hair, focus on the growth pattern because you always wanna cut against the grain. Um, so, like I said, make sure you're looking at the growth pattern so you know what you're cutting and you know how it's gonna look when you get done running the guard or the shear or whatever through it. Now guys, we're gonna come in with our number two, lever open, go right under where we hit that number three closed. Again, just stacking guards and finishing the actual blend. Now guys, another thing I wanna tell y'all, a little tip to help y'all, is a lot of people ask me when do you know to use a comb or when do you know to use a brush when cutting hair um, and getting access, getting excess hair off the head? So my rule of thumb is if I'm using anything from no guard to a one, one and a half closed, I'm using a brush. If I'm using one and a half uh, open or anything higher, I'm going with my comb. That's kind of my rule of thumb and how I feel about that. And it really has helped um, because like I said, anything, anything past a one and a half open is gonna be potentially longer hair. So a comb just makes sense to me to, to use that on. So now we're gonna close the lever guys. We're gonna come right under that to open. And then we got one more step after this to hit it with that one and a half halfway. And then the blend is gonna come in nice and smooth. Going to open it back up just to clean it up. Now, guys, we're going to come in with our one and a half lever halfway. And we're just going to hit at this last line right here that y'all see. This 
last line right here, we're gonna hit it with the one and a half and it's gonna take it out, if not soften it up, because one thing I have seen is certain hair types, um, his not so much because his hair is really thin and light, so the line will probably come out nice and easy. But on some hair types, you will have to come back with the one open, which I'll probably come back with the one open again just to get it nice and clean and really detailed. Um, but you will have to come in sometimes with the one and a with the one open to really clean up the blend and make it make it nice and sm a smooth transition. As there y'all can see guys, this hair fed right into the one and a half and it just really blended itself out. But again, I'm still am gonna come back with the one open to really clean up this fade. So now we got the one, we're gonna open it up. We're gonna have our brush, cause like I said, one and a half, one and a half closed and under, I use the brush. And we're just gonna come back in, really focus on the corners of our blades and really detail any dark spots we see. If you need to as well, guys, you can always close the lever just a little bit, play with the lever to really get these dark spots gone. And there we go, guys. You'll see the blend is nice and smooth. We went back in and detailed. A couple more spots I'm gonna hit. But for the most part, this side is done. Now I'm gonna spin them around to the other side. We're gonna do the exact same thing. And then I'll show y'all how to get a nice and crispy lineup. All right, y'all, so now, Bro wants to cut off his beard. We're gonna leave the mustache. We're gonna give him a round goatee right here. Line the bottom up. Let me show you how we get down right here. First things first, we're gonna come through. I like to use non-sharp shavers when I'm just cutting the whole beard off, just so that way I don't irritate or pull any skin or anything. Sometimes if you come down here with some really sharp, sharp trimmers, and you go up too fast or too hard, you might catch some skin and you'll potentially cut your client. That's the last thing we want, guys. So again, just get it going both sides and shave them down to that desired spot that he wanted, or this desired length that he wanted. And he wants it disconnected as well. So we're gonna cut all this off. All right guys, now before we go and hit the actual goatee itself, what we're gonna do is line up this mustache. Relax. So what I like to do, is first go in and brush it. For the most part, all my clients get it knocked down with the one or one open. So that's what we're gonna come in and do right now. Doesn't really cut much off, but more so just gets all these straggly hairs that are that are out. All right, then right after that, we're gonna come in again with our trimmer. And when I like to line my mustaches up, I like to go Really what I like to do with this is I like to put it right above the lip. Some people leave like a, a decent gap in it. I like to put it right above the lip. Now if the client wants me to raise it, then I'll raise it. But for the most part, me just lining up a mustache and the client not telling me, I'll just, I'll try to put it right on as close and right on the lip as possible.
Now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. And the reason on the mustache I like to use not really sharp trimmers is because sometimes when you line up the mustache and you're pressing on it, you're some, sometimes you'll slip down just a little bit. And if your blade's really sharp, you might cut the, the corners of the lip or you might cut right here in this very sensitive area on the top of the lip. So just to prevent that, I don't use sharp trimmers. Now guys, for the top, we're gonna keep his mustache about half an inch thick. So we're just gonna flip the trimmer over, come down. And what I like to do is keep the same shape, just drop the line down. Some people, what they'll do is they'll start right here and they'll put the whole blade and make this straight. I do that only when the client asks. So the client says, just line up the mustache, I keep this little diagonal shape with it. Then we'll go back in and we're gonna clean the top up. Now we're gonna go do the same thing on the opposite side. Now guys, about this time you would go look in the mirror, let the client look in the mirror and tell them, hey, how does it look? You want me to go a little bit thinner, a little bit cut off a little bit more, but since I already know him and I cut his hair all the time, I know exactly how he likes it. So I know that the way I just shaped it is the perfect way that he is gonna want it. So just go in and clean these edges up. Now guys, we're gonna go to the goatee. He wants it more right on the edge of his chin rather than it being way out here. And he wants all this cut off. So we're gonna go in and cut all this off. And we're gonna flip the trimmer over, come in. And then about right here, you're just gonna start rounding it and start working your way to the bottom. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the side. Now again, guys, this is a more sensitive area, so make sure you're not using super sharp trimmers. Because anyways, we're gonna come back and clean it with the blade. So just make sure you're being nice and gentle on the skin. Now right here, we're gonna get him to look up. And we're gonna put that line right here at the bottom. So we're just gonna take this and connect them in the middle. Again, being sure not to apply too much pressure because we do not want to irritate the skin.
All right, guys, now we're gonna come back in with our shaver. So we're just gonna go in and shave all this down. Get it nice and bald. So I'm gonna speed the rest of this up. And then after this, we're gonna go into the edge up, guys. Real quick, I did want to show y'all right now. I'm about to go in with my Uno shavers. Put your top lip down. I'm about to go in with my Uno shavers, guys. And this is exactly what I was talking about. Is the reason you want a single foil small shaver like this. Whether it's the TPOBs or the Unos or the Babyliss. I would prefer the TPOBs or the Unos just because they're a lot smaller um, than the Babyliss ones. But any single foil shaver is going to be really good for these small spots that you don't really want to go in and shove a double foil shaver in. All right guys, now we're gonna go in and do this edge up. So typically what I like to do with edge ups is come in, comb all this down with the closed tooth or the teeth that are close on the comb. Um, come in and really comb it down. So as you can see guys, in his corners, he is a little bit light. So therefore what that means, especially in this left corner, he's a lot lighter than he is in the right corner. So we are gonna hit him with some enhancements, but at the same time, we're gonna keep this edge up nice and low so we can keep it as natural as possible. Now what I'm gonna go in and do is hit it with some hairspray. Hit it with some hairspray. And what I would do is get my blow dryer and go and hit it with some cold air to really lock it in. But I don't have my blow dryer at the moment, so we're just gonna let the hairspray sit in, comb it down, and let the hairspray harden up. Now guys, when you're doing an edge up, you really wanna focus on not pushing them back and keeping it at the lowest point possible. So if right now, if I were to look at his edge up, where I would start, I would start on the lighter side and hit it very lightly in the corners and work my way across. Um, just because if I were to start my edge up in the middle to where it's more darker and hit it about right here and work my way to the edge, we're going to push him back a lot and his corners are going to be really, really, really light. And that's what we don't want because that's when people start seeing that they're receding and their corners are getting pushed back. And then that's when they just stop coming to you because you push them back. Um, so that's what we're going to do guys. We're going to start on this left side and work our way to the right side. Um, Typically what you could do also is go in and hit these vertical bars first. I'm gonna do those last just because I wanna make sure my edge up really is as straight as possible. And then I could put these vertical bars right in place where they need to be. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in with my sharp trimmer. Shout out to Coco for these. I call these the um, green goblins. These are my little green goblins. Um, I know there is TPOBs actually have the goblin clipper, but I call these my green goblins and they're hitters. So. We're gonna start with the left side. We're gonna hit it as low as possible. And then we're just gonna work our way across the edge up. Like I said, we are gonna come back with enhancements, guys. So don't really focus too much on the lightness. Focus more on just lightly tapping the edge up to get it as straight as possible. Again, brushing every time. You hit it, you want to comb it back down or brush it if you're using a brush, just so that way you know that the hair is being laid down to where it naturally is laying. Now, as you can see guys, his hairline is straight right there to even go and double check. What you can do is put your comb right up against it and just roll it. And if you're where you need to be at all the points, I might go in, cut that point just a little bit more down. But if it glides right across from it, right onto it and just go smooth and you're right under the whole time, you have a nice straight edge up. Now, one thing I did learn, shout out to my coworker Izzy for teaching me this. I really never noticed it too much, but in the corners, you want to also round them just a, a little bit 
to the back. Not so, you're, you're not gonna come in and my, clip, my trimmer's off and you're not gonna push it that much to the back. What you're gonna more focus on doing and what you're gonna do is you're gonna come in and just barely push the corner up. So that way when you're looking at it from the straight position, the corners go up and it's gonna give it that really nice, crisp, straight illusion. So what you, is what you really, really want. Now we're gonna come in and hit these vertical bars. You really don't wanna push them back. You wanna keep them as natural as possible. And since he doesn't have the hooks or the seat cups, we don't really have to focus on making those even. We more so are just gonna come in and put in those vertical bars. Using the eyebrow as indicators, this is on the edge, this is right here on the edge, so we know they're where they need to be, and they're nice and straight. All right guys, now we're gonna come in and do, we're gonna hit him with this razor work. First thing I like to do is I like to come in, put some Tomb 45 Shave Gel. Shout out to Tomb 45, I think this is one of the best shave gels on the market just because it has vitamin E and aloe vera in it. So for some reason, if on the neck you nick somebody or you put the shaver on them and they get really irritated, I highly suggest getting this because it does have aloe vera in it so you can go in, put it on that cut or that um, irritation and it'll really cool it down and get it back to normal. But what I like to do is I like to go in and just put a little bit on my glove and then what I'll come in and do is I'll use my pinky to come in and lay it down where I am gonna hit with the razor. So I'm gonna hit these vertical boxes. I'm not really gonna focus so much on hitting the edge up. I am gonna come in and just clean up this little widow's peak, the little widow's peak that we did cut off. Not a lot. Now again, you're gonna open your razor, pull the skin back, just go ahead and let that lay glide along the skin. Make sure you're keeping it at that 45 degree angle so you are not cutting him because the last thing you want to do is cut your client. And yeah, nobody wants to be in that position, so just don't do it. So same thing right here, guys. We come in, stretch the skin. And just let that blade glide on it nice and smooth. Just like that, guys. Again, right here, Typically what you would do is, how I do it is I'll go in, put the headrest on, lean them back and do it. But just for this one, I don't have that chair. I'm gonna go reverse hand and just clean the widow's peak up just like this, stretching the skin down. Go in and clean it up. Now also what I'll do, I learned this, shout out to Nate as well, is I'll come in with a comb, not really a brush because it can get messy, but with a comb, Come in and clean all that gel off. Now what we can come in and do guys is put some enhancements and really make this edge up pop. So right here guys, I got my Tomb 45 clutch card. As you can tell, it's been going through it. It's all colored out. I probably need to get a new one. I'm gonna have to hit up Sean Cotter for that. But today guys, I am going in with Red by Kiss Temporary Color Enhancements. Um, I usually, typically I do use Tomb 45 No Drip with their, um, with their B-Mix uh, compressor, but I have to get a new um, compressor part. Uh, the gun is working perfectly fine, but I do need to go in and get a new compressor part. So until then, I'm using this temporary color, guys. Sometimes this lasts a couple days, but it does last nothing compared to the Tomb 45 B-Mix. So. so guys, now we're gonna go in and hit the vertical bar. So with color enhancements, guys, you really want to focus much more on hitting it where it needs to be and not, you, typically what I used to do is I used to spray from afar, um, but I've learned to really come up close and just hit it exactly where you want it and it'll it, 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 it hit it exactly where it needs to be. 
rather than spraying from afar you might get some that lands over here you'll get a lot of overspray especially with these cans um, now we're going to go to the center and really work our way to the vertical bar going in and spraying in his edge up same thing over here we're going to come in hit this vertical bar now we're going to just for right here since i already see where i have to connect it we're just going to go ahead and connect it right away right there guys there's his edge up nice and straight we got the enhancements on there nice and clean and yeah guys so that's really going to be the end of the cut as y'all can tell we got the mid high fade we got a five on top we got enhancements we lined up the goatee lined up the mustache hit everything with the razor man and this is the final product let me know what y'all think in the comments man it's your boy so icy blends and we out